Good morning. It is September 4th. We are studying uh, more projectile motion and range of a projectile today. Um, I know I look exactly the same as last time we were together. That's because it's about uh, 15 minutes later. Um, maybe a little later than that, but anyway, we're covering those things today. You can see your chapter test is looming out there real soon. For those of you who have studied ahead, looked at the notes online, I saw that I had written on there this summer when I made these notes that range of projectile would not be on your chapter test. I couldn't be more wrong. There is a section of that, and so therefore we need to make sure that we understand it. You have it today and then also on Tuesday and then a lab dealing with it on Wednesday, okay? So that's range of a projectile. Uh, other than that, I think that's about it. Hopefully you're getting about ready for your test. You had two homework assignments for to go over for today, which were uh, chapter three, homework number five on up and down gravity, and then chapter four, homework number one, one through four, dealing with projectile motion. <clears throat> In the chapter three, homework number five, number 21 says an arrow is launched vertically upward from a crossbow at 98.1 meters per second using 9.81 meter per second squared is acceleration gravity. What is the instantaneous speed at the end of 10 seconds? Some people can just uh, almost conceptually see the answer is going to be that its speed is zero. If not, of course, you can always plug it into the equations. And in this equation here, you can see that it's at the top of its path. Part B, what was its average speed up to that moment? So if it's Final speed is zero, and its initial speed is 98. In fact, with the, one of our take-home labs, you had to use the average speed on the lab 2.2 in order for us to come up with the final speed. Um, that's the nice thing about speed is that its speed is increasing linearly with time because of this equation being linear. So its average speed would just be half that, 49. And then how high has it risen? To find out what height it gets to, you've got your choice on equations to use for that since uh, the fact that uh, we know so much, the easiest equation is the Zen equation, right? Total distance and total time to find average velocity. Therefore, you can plug that in to get this, the um, distance. Most people don't think that way though. I think most people, I don't know what to say is most people. Let me just say that it could be an even mix of you that chose this equation could be an even mix of you that chose this equation. Yeah, 10 seconds, we know the time. And then one third of you could have even picked this equation. One half VI plus VF. Aren't you really just doing the average right there, right? That's what part B did times time, okay? So however you get it. What is the instantaneous acceleration 4.1 seconds into the flight? We can say that the acceleration is 9.8 the entire time. Can we be specific that in the first 10 seconds, it's negative 9.8? And then in the second 10 seconds from 10 to 20, it's positive 9.8? That would be acceptable, but definitely that 9.8 is a constant. <clears throat> in question number 22, it's getting a little bit harder. This one requires a system of equations because we have two things that are tied together by the fact that we hear it 10 seconds later. So when the firecracker is dropped, there's a time downward. And then when the firecracker explodes, there's a time back upward. And together, those two times have to add up to 10 seconds. Okay. Meanwhile, there is a distance that it falls. The distance that it falls downward is equal to VIT plus one half AT squared. That would be based on T downward. I could put that in here too, but that's going to go away. And then we also have, this is something that's new, the distance upward is now dealing with sound. Sound's apparently not affected by gravity. So we can just say that it's equal to the speed of sound times the time it takes to get back up. So what I see here is I have a total of four unknowns and three equations. Um, I, could I come up with another equation that says that I also know that the distance down has to equal the distance up? And now I should be able to call that four equations with four unknowns, okay? So 
what's a good starting place, like where to do. I, I'm thinking instead of system of equations, I like the idea of um, just doing substitution. I might start by cleaning this up a little bit and say that one's already cleaned up enough. Maybe if I just get rid of the units at the end of it, we just see it as an equation. That one's already cleaned up enough. That one's cleaned up enough. This is the only one that I still think I would like to rewrite it as half of gravity is 4.9 T down squared. Now we see we have our equations. Okay, so I could start by taking these two equations and putting them in here. And then that would give me an equation that's only dealing with T ups and T downs. And then this one's also a T up and T down. Um, the only reason I'm speaking slowly is I'm just trying to think of what's the quickest way to the answer. Not that I can't get there any way I do it. It's just that some ways might require a little bit more work than others. I think I'll start with that. So let's take this equation, let's get a different color going here. And let's take this and say that the S down is equal to 4.9 T down squared equals the S up, which is 330 T up. Then I could take this equation over here and rewrite it as T up equals 10 minus T down. Take this and substitute in for T up. So 4.9 T down squared equals 330 times 10 minus T down. Now I have one equation with one unknown, but unfortunately it is a quadratic. Now, let me teach you how I solve quadratics. So we're going to get everything over to one side. Let's just also round 4.9 to 5. So 5t five squared, then the middle term will be a negative 330t. If we move that to the other side, it becomes a positive 330t. And then the last term is 3300, but it's going to be negative when it's brought over to the other side. Hmm. Equals 0. While I'm at it, I'd probably still use my calculator and divide through by 5. So 3,300 3, divided by 5 is 660. So this becomes t squared plus 66t minus 660 equals 0. Okay. If you're really good at foiling and or defoiling or whatever they call that, factoring is really its true name, then you could maybe come up with what two numbers multiply together to equal 660 and add one's negative, one's positive, and add together to equal positive 66. I couldn't do that. But what I could do, since I only have a TI-83, I don't, I mean, I have a TI Inspire, but it's never charged. Um, I use the graphing screen. I go to the Y equals, and then I'm going to type it in as Y equals, I have to use X because there's no T. So X squared plus 66 X minus 660. Okay, and then I graph it. Now I'm sure I have to change my graph screen because I'm sure it's not going to be the right thing for it. But this graph apparently is a really large parabola. It's a parabola. Let me draw it because you can't see it there. Parabola does this. Okay, those are the zeros of the equation. In other words, those are the places where this is true. Now, this is the t axis, right? problem with this side of the axis is these are negative values of t, which there's no such thing. So the only true answer is this one right here. So all I have to do to find out what that answer is, remember this is physics, not engineering, so we can approximate, is I'll just use the either trace function or the calculate function and go to that zero and it will find it for me. Okay, so knowing how to use your calculator, even though you'll never do that on my AP test. Currently it comes out to be 396. Okay, good time. Calculate the speed at which hailstone falling from a cumulonimbus cloud will strike the ground, presuming there is no air resistance. Thank goodness there is. So we plug this in based on the givens that we have here. We know the distance, we know the acceleration, we want to know the speed. Sounds like the equation that's independent of time. And we get about a thousand miles per hour. And as I put a little note on the slides, uh, I think that humans, all living things, would have had to evolve to have an exoskeleton, right? Uh, we wouldn't be able to survive uh, hailstones coming down with that kind of velocity. 
A uh, young kid playing catch by himself throws the ball straight up. How fast does he throw the ball upward if he catches the ball three seconds later? Am I mistaken in my thought process that this is what you're uh, – I am mistaken. You don't have an up and down lab. Uh, yours is uh, – regular physics is going to get a lab like this. So this question that we're doing right now is a regular physics lab. They're going to use this to figure out an initial speed by uh, – by doing something like this. I mean, obviously it's just a little baby lab, but you gotta do something. I wanna have you guys doing labs. So first thing I would do is say that the T to the top is equal to 1.5 seconds. And then I would just solve this as uh, our easiest, one of our easiest motion equations, this one, and get 14.7, okay? Question number 25 is difficult, like our uh, question from the examples from the last, from this section. Uh, a bag of sand is dropped by a would-be assassin from the roof of a building and it just misses Tough Tony, a gangster that is two meters tall. The missile traverses the height of Tough Tony in 0.2 seconds, landing with a thud at his feet. How high was the building? Remember what we talked about uh, in the last homework assignment? We talked about uh, the object that was dropped free fall, fell 50 meters, and then we talked about solving the second half of the problem using that starting speed of 32 meters per second and finishing the rest of the 50 meters. That's kind of what this is, is the fact that we need to figure out the speeds around Tough Tony in order to solve this. As it is right now, um, how tall is the building leaves us with either I could say S equals VIT, sorry, I've got to stall a little bit so I can remember how to solve this one. S equals VIT plus one half AT squared, knowing that this is initial velocity of zero, brings that, but we can't solve for S unless we know T. The other thing that I could do is I could also say that VF squared equals VI squared plus two AS, and of course VI is still zero, so then that means we need to know what the speed is right before it hits the ground which I don't know, but I do know this, that the speed, right as it's about to hit the ground, is the same as the speed, right as it's about to hit the ground. I know, crazy to say that. But remember, it wasn't dropped from two meters. It had reached a speed right here at the top of, top of Tough Tony. And if we knew that speed, we could then use that to find out what the final speed is down here at the bottom, okay? So, I think I'm going to work on this for a little bit because the other thing I know is that gravity is still doing its thing down in here too. So if I know the distance, the time, and the acceleration, I think we could use that to find out what the speed is at the top of Tough Tony, right? Because I could say S equals VIT plus one half AT squared. I could say two equals our money question times 0.2 seconds plus one half of 9.8, 4.9 times 0.2 squared. That was just used to find out what the initial speed at the top of Tough Tony was. Once I know that speed, I'm gonna have to cheat ahead and just get that answer. 9.02. Now that I know that the initial speed at the top of Tough Tony's head is 9.02 meters per second, meters per second then I can use that information now to find the final speed at Tony's feet. So then I'll just go with VF equals VI plus AT. Now, please don't take my nonchalant nature to make this seem like it should be easy. Remember that I've seen this question, this would be the 21st year. And including all the times I've got to teach two AP classes in a year, that would make this like three times maybe. So it might be the 24th time I've gone over this question. Plus the summer when I was making up these slides. So don't take that that I'm that I think this should be easy. This is hard. This is a problem that is just dealing with where and what motion equation do I use as I work through the problem. Okay, developing some thought process here. All right, multiply that out. That tells me that at Tony's feet is a speed of nine ten point nine eight. Okay, so what's special about that speed? is like we already talked about. That speed can also be used for determining the height of the building. 
what would what height is required to start at zero and get to that speed. I know that if you start at 9.02, you only need a height of two meters to get to that speed. But if you want to start at zero, what height is required to get to that speed? So now we're falling back on, I think this equation right here. So now I can take this and plug it in up here and say 10.98 squared equals two times 9.8 and solve for S. Remember that VI is zero because we're not talking about a tough toning, we're talking about the whole building. Is that what I did? That's what I did, six meters tall. Okay, not an easy problem. You don't have anything this hard on your chapter test. You definitely have problems like this one on your chapter test. Even number one is not that great a problem because there's just, because bullets are traveling so fast, there's just not enough room in 100 meters to recognize the parabola. This is a really, really fat, wide parabola in this problem. In 100 meters, it hasn't really dropped very far. All right, so suppose you point a rifle horizontally directed directly at the center of a paper target, 100 meters away, muzzle speed of 100. Where will it strike the target? Okay, well, what I know is if at the exact time that you shoot the bullet, you drop a bullet, the bullet will follow will fall the same distance as this bullet drops off of its straight line, right? So, also, here's a better one. I don't know that I want to use that one yet, is the fact that if we could turn gravity off and have it just travel horizontally at 100 meters per second, the time required to travel 100 meters is just one second, right? So S in the X direction equals V in the X direction times T, 100 equals 100 times T, T equals one second. Now that I know that it's one second, now I can go over here to the bullet that is dropped and I can say in the vertical direction, VIT goes away. We don't put the 100 in there. One half of uh, 9.8 times T squared. Looks like 4.9 meters. So 100 meters away for a target is greater than a football field, right? Maybe including the end zone. Uh, 100 meters per second for a bullet speed is about 200 and some odd miles per hour, 230 miles per hour. I don't think that's very fast for a bullet. So having it drop by five meters in that distance, it seems reasonable, I guess. Not that we have to reason this one out. Question number two, a shoe is flung horizontally at six meters per second, hits the ground two seconds later. What vertical height was it thrown from and what horizontal distance did it travel? If one shoe is thrown horizontally and the other one is dropped vertically, the one that is dropped vertically will hit the ground at exactly the same time. So how about if we say S in the Y direction? I better put this in here once in a while so that those of you who are just holding on for dear life, don't get into the trap of putting the six meters per second in here. That is a horizontal speed. This is a vertical direction. The two things are independent of each other. They're just simultaneous, but they're independent of each other. So what distance it falls is based on half of 9.8 times two squared, okay? Once we know that distance, that's just that distance. If you wanna know the horizontal distance, you can say S in the X direction equals the six meters per second times the time of two seconds to get 12. Good classic problem there. I mean, if that's on a test, it just hurts me when people get this wrong. Uh, last year's AP physics class, a lot of them got this wrong because they just refused to go and learn processes like this. They were last minute people and they just refused to learn the process. You guys have the advantage that you are able to spread out notes. I'm gonna limit you with time, but just remember when you come back that uh, if you've set an expectation high for you, you're gonna have that expectation kept that way. So make sure that you're learning your stuff as you go, not just going, okay, how will I access what I have instead of what I know? Raw egg is thrown horizontally straight out of the window of Trinity House. Boy, the combination of question number three and today's notes make me think of a guy named Kurt that I knew in college. I'll tell you all about that in a second. Initial speed is 20 meters per second, hits the ground 1.2 seconds later. From what height was it launched? If one egg is thrown at the same time that one egg is dropped, we know they're going to hit the ground at the same time. 
So let's not worry about the throw an egg. Let's instead say S in the Y direction equals VIT, leave that out, times one half of gravity times two seconds later. Hey, didn't we just have this? No, now it's 1.5, 1.22. I think that I cut and pasted pictures here and they weren't correct. Let's use 1.2 as our number because that's what it says in the problem. If it says 1.5 on your homework sheet, then use 1.5. This doesn't really matter. Plug those numbers in um, just in case my answer is wrong on the next page. I'm going to say 1.2 squared times 4.9 equals 7. So I think I did see 7 on that next slide, but I did put in a 5 there. That should be a 2. Okay, and then this should not be a 2, this should be a 1.2 seconds later. All right, now notice I didn't even use a 20 because it didn't ask us how far away does it hit. It only asked how long was it in the air. Ended up being extra information. Two diving platforms, 10 meters high each, terminate just at the edge of each end of a swimming pool that is 30 meters long. How fast must two clowns run straight off their respective boards? if they are to collide at the surface of the water mid pool. So right away, we're just gonna divide this problem in half. Let's just do one clown going 15 meters. So in other words, we know that S in the X direction is 15. We know S in the Y direction is 10. And we wanna solve for what is the initial velocity. So it's just reverse of what we normally are doing. So I guess what I would do is I first of all need to know what kind of time, because if I need to know the initial velocity, I'm going to say that V in the X direction is equal to S direction divided by time, right? That's how we find velocity in the simplest form. But you can't do this if you don't know the time. So to find the time, we're going to have another clown just jump right off and go straight down. That clown, S in the Y direction, equals VIYT plus one half AT squared. We'll use that to find the time. I should have put a 10 in there. The 10 equals 4.9 times t squared. Solve for t. Once we know what t is, then we'll put an n up there and we'll solve for the initial velocity. 10.5. All right, good times. Your assignments, you have two. One of them is to do more projectile motion. This is just one question just for extra practice with projectile motion. It would have come after a lab in class. Instead, you have labs at home. Second part of your homework assignment is to do projectiles at an angle, what we tend to call the range problems. I think I have two of them here. Um, it's not that these are hard, it's just that these are time consuming. Um, I want to say you're doing like four questions for every one, or <clears throat> maybe it's that you're doing five questions for every one. So just be ready for that. First thing is, let's come up with a process for this. Once again, if you're reading this on the notes and it says this is not on the test, that is complete and utter untruth. This is on your test. The test has been made. It's there. I just went and looked at it when I was making when I was making these inner right slides, and I said, wait a minute here. I could have sworn it was on the test. It's there. In this class, whenever you see an angle, find the angles components. Now, 40 degrees means that we're going to find x and y components of something. Now, what are the X and Y components you're gonna find? Well, it depends, what is going on at the angle? In this case, it's an object is shot at a speed that's at that angle. So the initial velocity has an X component and the initial velocity has a Y component. What are we gonna do with those things? That's gonna show up as we go through this problem. Mine, what I'm telling you is, whenever you see an angle, find the X and Y components of something that's dealing with that angle. Now you might be saying, well, could it have been the, the S? Well, then we would have had to know some initial S to find the X and Y components of it, all right? So the only thing that we have here at the start of this problem is that there is a velocity vector pointing like that, 40 degrees. All right, so we have VIX equals V times cosine theta, and we have VIY equals V times sine theta. Those values come out to be 38 and 32. <clears throat> Come on. Come on. 38 and 32. 
All right, now, what are we going to do with those things? Okay, well, first of all, uh, I would, wouldn't mind trying to keep some color coordination to this problem. So I'm going to get rid of that ugly blue there and exchange that with a blue VI Y in this direction and a green VIX in this direction. Okay, now, just like with the other projectiles, if something's moving horizontally, there's nothing to change its speed. Therefore, VIX and SX are related to each other, and that is the money question, what distance, SX is the money question, that we can say SX equals VX times T, or we can say S sub X equals this number here, 38 times T. All right, so there's a good start. So now how do we find out what that time is? <clears throat> well, sorry, this problem always gets me so choked up. Poor Kurt. At one point in time, I lived in, a, in an apartment complex that was three stories. And so me and three other guys, we lived in the, on the third story. And uh, so we'd be sitting there like middle of the day. And if somebody happened to be walking by the window and noticed this guy named Kurt. Now, Kurt, if I were to explain what Kurt looked like, he's a good looking guy. But he was as white as white can possibly get. I mean that palest of white skin with the whitest of white hair. So almost like he's albino. Great guy, great basketball player, great friend. If anybody ever saw Kurt walking by outside in the quad of our apartment area, they would yell, Kurt sighting. And we all had our drill. We went and would get our tennis ball cannon out of the closet, which was made by taking a whole bunch of Coors Light beer cans and duct taping them together. And the bottom one, the can was kind of complete. You could fill it with lighter fluid. We could stuff a tennis ball down inside the cans, and I think it was a tennis ball. Whatever it was, it fit really snugly in there, but not too tightly, and push that down in there. And somebody would hold it, you know, shake it up real good, get that the volatile lighter fluid to, to gas. Somebody would hold it. This is the dangerous part. We'd slam open the window, and then right as somebody would start lighting it, then we would yell uh, expletives at Kurt as he was down there. And then all of a sudden there would be this boom as the cannonball fired the cannon down there at Kurt. I don't think we ever hit Kurt, but I'm sure we scared him many times. Probably uh, neighbors too. And fortunately, everybody was college kids, so we never got in trouble. Uh, don't try to do things like that nowadays. That was the early 90s. Society's lost its sense of humor since we've had things like uh, the Twin Towers and Columbine and all of those kinds of things. So there is no sense of humor, so don't do it. You'll go to jail. All right, good time. So, and I'm back with you again. How do I figure out the time? There's symmetry to this problem. The object that follows this parabolic path and hits the ground right here will hit the ground right there. Let's not use green. We'll hit the ground, use red. Hit the ground right here at exactly the same time that if there was no gravity and you shot at a lesser speed, 30 eight meters per second, it'll get to that same spot. Also, an object that goes straight up at a lesser speed of 32 will get to the same vertical height as the actual projectile and then come back down and hit the ground in the same time. So once again, time is the great unifier to this problem. So that's what I'm gonna solve is in the vertical direction, I have an initial velocity, I have a final velocity, zero at the top, and then I can solve for the time. That's an easy equation. Vf equals Vi plus At to the top. Or in other words, zero equals 50 plus negative 9.8 times T to the top. T to the top is going to be around five. Maybe if we want more exactness than that. No, it's not 50. 3.3 will be the time because that's not 50. Gosh, see, if you guys would have been here to yell at me and say, no, you're telling too many stories. The vertical velocity component is not 50. That is the, or, that's the, at the angle. Our vertical velocity component is 32. Therefore, this comes out to be around 3.2. I think with 9.8, it's actually 3.3. That's why I'm making answer slides, huh? That's just T to the top. That means that the total time that the object is in the air is double of that, which is 6.6. .6. So everybody takes 6.6 .6 seconds to get back to the ground. Two of them here at the red X and one of them here at the blue X. 
So I'll just put in 6.6 .6 down here and solve for S in the X direction, and we get 248. Okay, so one, two, three, I mean, T to the top and T total are kind of all one question, and then four. So four problems in one is what each of these is. I got one more and then we're all done. A football, in fact, these are the words that I read straight off of the test that you're getting. Well, at least the top form. And I can't even say the top form is form A because now I don't use form A, B, C, D because otherwise you're just going to text each other. Which form would you get? So I don't want you to be involved. I want you to just do stuff for yourself, right? It's good karma. Do it for yourself. Don't be thinking that you need to get somebody else's help. We know you're not going to fail the class. We know because of persistent learning, we've got to be kind of lenient. So just do your test. Okay? Anyway, the one that's on top right now says a football is kicked, and then there's numbers that go with it. All right, so first of all, we need the X and Y components of the velocity, because that's what we do anytime we see an angle. VIX equals 25 times cosine of 45, and VIY equals 25 times sine, that's a sine, let's try it again, times sine of 45. Now, those two values are going to be the same, because that's what's special about 45 degree angles. They both equal 21. Why do we care? Because in the horizontal direction, if we want to know how far the football travels to get to over here, S in the X direction now equals 21 times T. So now we need to know what T is. To find out T, we have to use the vertical component and go straight up and then straight back down. So that's where I fall back on the VF equals VI plus AT to the top. Uh, zero equals 21, got it right this time, 9.8 times T to the top. T to the top equals 2.16. That means T total equals, what'd that say, 4.3? 4.3. Now that we know that's 4.3 seconds, we're going to take that and plug it in up here and solve for S in the X direction, 91. I know I went over those quick. That's okay. You can handle it. Take your time. You're going to pause. You're going to look it over. You're going to practice your homework assignment six through eight. Take it seriously and do it without looking at my stuff and then see how you did. And then uh, our next assignment, I think, really is just going to be more of the same. Um, more range problems, 9 through 12, and then we start the review. Uh, and then, that, then we're ready for our chapter test. You guys have a good one. See you on the next time.